Hey everybody, on today's episode of P-Dubs Arcade Loft, we're going to take a look at the Tulsa Arcade's mini Nintendo Switch pinball cabinet. That's right, you got your Nintendo Switch loaded with pinball games and you want to have a mini pinball experience. Is this the way to go? Let's find out. Now I'll have links for everything you need to know in the video description below, but here it is. This thing is CNC cut to perfection by Tulsa Arcades, a mini Nintendo Switch pinball cabinet. And these things range anywhere from $40 to $80, depending on which options you choose, whether you want it pre-assembled upon arrival, if you want it flat pack, do it yourself to save some money, whether or not you want graphics. He's got different graphic options. Actually, I really like these Tulsa Arcades graphics that he went with. I think this looks fantastic. So taking a look at uh, some of the things you might need to get set up, a uh, Nintendo Switch controller. Then right there, we got our Nintendo Switch encoder board. We have the cable for the encoder board that goes to USB. Then we have our USB to USB-C adapter for plugging the encoder board into the Nintendo Switch. You're gonna need at least six buttons. These are the buttons I chose. You're probably best using short stem buttons as well as non-LED buttons. Now these are LED buttons. If you do use LED buttons, although they might light up, although these won't when I hook them up, you'll see later in the video. If they do light up, they are gonna drain the Nintendo Switch battery a lot quicker. You definitely can't use any kind of long stem buttons or things like that. Also try to use Sanwa buttons and guess what? The holes aren't big enough for Sanwa. So if you wanna use those, you're gonna have to drill the pre-drilled holes a little bit bigger. On the back of your Nintendo Switch encoder board will be the button assignment, so you know what buttons and what cables to plug into what ports, so getting set up is pretty simple. All right, to get things set up, obviously we don't want this to look like a toaster anymore. We want this to look like a mini pinball cabinet, so first thing first, we need to gently slide out the bottom piece of the pinball cabinet. Slides in and slides out, just give it a little push, and boom, we're ready now to start mounting our buttons. Now the best way to go in my opinion is to plug your wire into your button, thread the wire through the hole as well as the button, and then of course use your uh, screw cap, thread that along the wire and screw that into the cabinet first. So first step first in my opinion is to go this way, get all your buttons and wires inside of the cabinet like so. When you're done it's going to look a little something like this, a little bit of a rat's nest, but don't worry everything's going to turn out just fine. We have all of our buttons, screw caps, wires plugged in, we're ready to go. On to the next step. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and grab my Nintendo Switch encoder board and start plugging in the appropriate buttons into the appropriate port assignments on the encoder board using the button mappings on the back of the encoder board, all the little letters, as a guide. Definitely want to make sure you have flipper buttons mapped, as well as an L and R left and right button for nudging. That's four buttons. And then of course the A button for launching the pinball, and then probably a start button, or if you wanted to do an X button, or a Y button for wizard power for FX3, whatever you want to use there as well. Recommend using a start button next to the A button. Keep in mind you are playing on a Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch does have touchscreen, so when it comes to navigating your pinball games, you'll easily be able to touch the screen as well, moving around the menus, so you don't have to worry about not having every single Nintendo Switch button built into this little mini pinball machine. Gotta love that touch screen. After we have our buttons plugged where they need to be into the encoder board, we can go ahead and take that big long USB cable meant for the encoder board. We can go ahead and plug that in right there. Definitely wanna keep this wrapped up, especially if you get a very long cord. There's not a lot of room in this cabinet to have a rat's nest of cables flying around. And as you can see, we have that USB cable. But of course, we're gonna need that USB to USB-C adapter to plug this into the Nintendo Switch in order to get the uh, controllers, the USB encoder board and buttons working with the Nintendo Switch. We're gonna go ahead and thread that right through the uh, pre-drilled holes, nicely well made and uh, perfectly measured out by Tulsa Arcades, connect the adapter piece, and now we are pretty much almost finished, guys. We can go ahead and get everything put in there neatly. We can clean it up and do a clean install a little bit later if we choose to. But the best thing to do at this point is go ahead and test and make sure everything works. I went ahead and I plugged the Nintendo Switch in as well as used a controller, tested everything out, and guess what? Everything was good to go on my end. We just need to clean things up and get everything 
finalized. Now the Nintendo Switch does power everything, so when you go ahead and you plug that in, your Nintendo Switch battery is going to power the buttons, the encoder board, things like that. That's why using uh, any kind of LED buttons are not recommended. This is what I had on hand from a previous Nintendo Switch mod that I'm working on, so just wanted to throw these in real quick. We're going to go ahead and get that cable connected. Also, you want to make sure your Nintendo Switch is turned on before you even put it inside of the cabinet. Make sure you hit that power button, go to the main menu. You guys know sometimes when you turn on your Nintendo Switch, if you don't hit that press A to continue right away, it automatically goes into sleep mode, and then you gotta pull the thing out of the cabinet again to get it to fire up. Now a very important step here, which I neglected to film for you guys, my apologies, is once you uh, get everything hooked up using your normal, uh, like your Pro Controller, you can kind of see it to the left there on this particular shot, use your Pro Controller, Head on over to the settings, go down to your controller settings, and make sure that the Pro Wired controller setting is turned on. If that's turned off, your Nintendo Switch isn't going to be able to read that USB encoder board. So make sure that that Pro Wired controller settings are turned on so it knows to look for the wired controller settings. After you turn it on, your controls will work, as you can see here, and it's time to play some pinball. Okay, here we go. Hey, Joe! Hey, Joe! I'm over here! Well, then, this has been an absolute misfire. Oh, this is fun, huh? Just waiting to be arrested from the cold clutches of evil! There are a ton of pinball games to play on the Nintendo Switch that you can get in cabinet mode, whether it's Pinball FX3 like you see in this video, or even from Magic Pixel's Zacharia games as well, as well as other, uh, you know, third-party independent pinball games. There's a lot of stuff out there on the Nintendo Switch you could try and get up and running. In my opinion, I think this is a super cool product. Really, really happy to have this. I think this is pretty nifty, and I know they're already coming out with some changes and improvements. There are also gonna be some future designs per JC over at Tulsa Arcades, including they're looking at creating a future version of this cabinet with a lit back box, as well as a way to hide that USB-C cable that sticks out the side. So there might be future variations of this cabinet coming down the road. And as you guys know, uh, P-Dubs Arcade Loft, whenever you guys use coupon code P-Dubs, you do save 10% off your orders with Tulsa Arcades, including on this particular product. Make sure you guys use that coupon code. My way to help you guys save a few bucks if you're interested in this product. In my opinion, I think this is a super cool, super cute, super nifty little mini pinball cabinet for my Nintendo Switch pinball games. I think this is a great product personally. Absolutely love it, but I want your honest opinions and feedback below. Do me a favor, guys. Leave me those comments, give me a thumbs up on the way out, and as always, guys, thank you for subscribing.